Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our Gospel lesson for uh, the seventh Sunday after Trinity, from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter, the feeding of the four thousand. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Christ Jesus, have you ever witnessed a miracle? Something that was so astonishing, out of the ordinary, inexplicable, that it had to be the direct work of God. Something that any who witnessed it would have to admit must have a divine origin. Of course, the people in our text witnessed such a miracle. They saw seven loaves, in the hands of Jesus Christ, multiplied enough to feed a multitude. They saw a small handful of fish, distributed by Jesus Christ, become enough to feed thousands. They witnessed a miracle that could only be explained in terms of Jesus' divinity. We witnessed a miracle this morning. Heaven was opened. The voice of God came down from on high and claimed a sinful child of Adam as his own, saying, This is now my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. According to God's gracious promise, the Holy Spirit descended from heaven and made his abode with William John Neuendorf. All sin was cleansed from him, and he was born again. But would we really call that a miracle? Certainly a miraculous thing took place, something that can only be done by God Himself. And yet, what did we see? We saw a sinful guy pour water over a baby. That's it. We didn't see any light from heaven. We didn't hear any voice booming down from the skies. We didn't see with our own eyes a dove descend and rest upon him. We didn't see any of those things. And in a few minutes, we are to celebrate the holy sacrament of our Lord's body and blood, the Lord's Supper, where miracle of miracles, mere bread, will become the body of Christ himself, and mere wine will become the blood by which he purchased our salvation from sin and death. And as in the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus once multiplied loaves so that they didn't run out, but could rather be enjoyed by all, so also as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, Jesus will remain intact, seated at the right hand of His Father in heaven, and yet His body will be multiplied so that every altar where His Supper is celebrated will have His body present upon it. And every mouth, that hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be fed with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Truly a miracle that surpasses our capacity to understand it. And yet, can we really call that a miracle? You could certainly witness our celebration of Holy Communion today and come away with the conclusion that all we did was eat bread and drink wine. We don't actually see any sort of transformation take place. We don't see His body there on the altar. And thank goodness we don't taste any of those things. Where's the miracle? The fact is, some of God's greatest miracles are performed right under our noses. We don't even know they're taking place. Why don't we regard everything as a miracle? Why don't we automatically regard every baptism as a miracle? Why don't we automatically regard every celebration of the Lord's Supper as a miracle? But I'll do you one better. Why don't we believe that every breath we take is a miracle? Why don't we believe that the food on our plates is there by a miracle of God? Why don't we believe that the fact of our existence itself is an astonishing miracle 
of our Creator. If God were to withdraw His gracious hand from this creation for an instant, we would all dissolve into nothingness. Our continued existence is a magnificent miracle of our Creator. But why don't we regard it as such? Why can Bill Nye, the science guy, who I used to enjoy watching on TV, but now I have to count as a terrible enemy of the Christian faith, who recently went to tour the Ark Encounter, headed by Ken Ham, so that he could debunk all of our Christian myths. Why is it that he can't accept that the laws of nature that he puts his faith in are themselves divine miracles? Why can't we accept that the fact that if I drop a ball, it'll hit the floor is a miracle? Why can't we accept that the light of the sun is a miracle? I think it's because we're used to it. Because we experience it day by day. Because it's the same old, same old. What if God promised us that He would put a magnificent cross in the sky where everyone could see it. And this would be a testimony for all time to the truth of the Christian religion. And 10,000 years from now, scientists would say, well, that cross is just there because it's there. It's just part of nature. It's part of creation. It's part of how things are. The fact is, familiarity breeds contempt. And we are familiar with miracles of such great magnitude that we can hardly imagine it. This creation, our existence, is a miraculous work of God. What are we to do? How do we break out of our jadedness and come to recognize every day as a miraculous gift of God? Well, consider that the God who multiplied loaves, the God who took those seven loaves and broke them so that there remained plenty, there was more after than there had been before, the same God who multiplied fish, the same God who has received my Son now into the kingdom of heaven through the sacrament of holy baptism, the same God who has washed away your sins, who has cleansed you by this saving sacrament and granted you the gift of the Holy Spirit, the same God who invites you to His table to receive the body and the blood by which your salvation from sin and death were bitterly purchased. The same God keeps and sustains you, preserves you, grants you everything that you need to support this body and life. The next time you go out to eat, when food is put on the plate in front of you, consider the long process that it took to get there. Consider the server who brought it to you, a person who was fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Consider the cooks in the kitchen, same thing. Granted skill by God to prepare food that is wholesome and enjoyable to eat, that brings joy to our hearts. Consider the semi-truck driver who transported all of the food from a plant somewhere. Consider the mechanics who built and maintained that truck. Consider the farmers who labor over their fields and livestock. Consider the sun and the rain and the soil, creations of God that are also necessary for these processes to continue. Consider how much effort God put in to you having one meal and consider that it never runs out. God is gracious to you at all times and consider especially that He is gracious to you with His forgiveness, with His life, and with His salvation. Yes, it is a sin against God not to recognize every day as a miracle. It is a sin against God not to recognize His creation as His magnificent work. And so we all are in need of forgiveness for taking such things for granted, for not receiving our daily bread with thanksgiving at all times, for not being in awe at His providential care. God grant that our eyes may be opened 
to see the miracles in the everyday. God grant us faith to see the miracle that took place in this baptism, to recognize the miracle that took place in your baptism. God grant us faith to believe in the miracle that will take place at the sacrament of His Son's body and blood. God grant us faith to believe in the miracle of our forgiveness, that we have eternal life. And God grant us faith to believe that everything He gives us in this life is a miraculous gift which will culminate in the miracle to end all miracles when God undoes death and corruption itself and we rise from our graves to inherit the miraculous kingdom of our Father. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.